Hi, welcome to APA panel on uh, peace. And my part will focus on how we use social media, especially in the last year and a half amidst COVID to create and promote peace. ATOP Meaningful World has been for over a year and a half promoting peace through weekly free Zoom support groups. And today I'd like to share a PowerPoint with you about our work and how we create peace, promote it, raise awareness, and build and maintain peace around the world. I'm going to share a slideshow with you on how social justice and humanitarian relief is promoted through social media, through weekly support groups. And this is inviting and including over 48 countries around the world and 26 states in the United States of America. I'd like to always start with a quote, uh, and the quote today that I was inspired to share is, anger is one letter away from danger. And what Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. And today we're going to talk about how we share the light um, and transform traumas to create peace, because uh, people that are traumatized cannot uh, engage, access, peace within. As peace starts first in our souls, in our bodies, minds, and spirit, and then we spread it around through our loving kindness. The five kinds of trauma are individual trauma, collective, vicarious, secondary, generational, and horizontal. Well, you may be aware of many of these, but uh, perhaps you're questioning, hmm, what is horizontal violence? Well, we also call it, we have created campaigns around the world and uh, created this campaign, Crab in the Bucket Syndrome. Be a true humanitarian, lift one another up. Don't be a crab in the bucket, pulling one another down. If you have observed few crabs in a bucket, when one tries to come out of the bucket, the second one pulls it down. The third one may try to come out, yet a fourth crab will pull it down. At the end, none of the crabs can exit and get out of the bucket. So what happens psychologically, we internalize the aggression and negativity of the perpetrator. We put one another down. We prefer the oppressor's kind. We make negative statements about ourselves or our kind and being an acting envious, jealous, or putting one another down, friends, family, etc., brothers, siblings. So we have uh, promoted through our uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, the value and the practice, important practice of forgiveness to create peace. Forgiveness can enable people to move beyond the trauma to uh, uh, due to the deep pain, hatred, grudges, and the resulting anger that one feels as a result of a trauma. And therefore, we have published a book on forgiveness and reconciliation. Of course, this is uh, Peace Psychology's uh, book series with Daniel Christie and uh, my co-editor, Raymond Palutian, that I teach this course at the Teachers College. And our last book is Forget Me Not. And this is a hands-on book to actually practice and create peace within through our seven steps. As uh, Gandhi said, the we can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of a strong. This is because the general population or the myth is that uh, weak people um, are forgiving. 
no, uh, strong people are. And what is forgiveness? Because we have a lot of uh, issues just defining what forgiveness is. For me, forgiveness is shifting from our automatic ego reaction. What's the ego reaction? I want to hit them back. I want to make them feel the pain. This is what I hear in my sessions usually uh, when people are traumatized and acting from their anger and frustration. But the true forgiveness is shifting from that to a very genuine, non-reactive conscious response, authentic response, which is empathy, considering that the other person is not mindful. So we even separate for from giving and I like to uh, give tribute to my mentor, Maya Angelou, who has said, hey, that has caused a lot of problems in this world, but has not solved even one yet. Here she is, God rest her soul. And we also, through our uh, social media, work on disarming people within. Um, disarming, letting go of their anger, negativity, greed, envy, and rage. Well, anger um, really hurts us physically, starting from neurology, neurosystem, skeletal, immune, lung, brain, skin, gastro, heart, and respiratory, adrenal, etc. All the system, basically. And uh, our body keeps the score, and that's how we, uh, our organs uh, give up. Uh, our cells keep the score, our bodies remember, and we need to mobilize the body through physical work. See? Look at this photo, how clearly explains how we hold on to things. And we don't even realize we're believing from holding on and we need to let go. And how do we do that? By nurturing emotional intelligence, EQ. And here we have a wonderful banner, which we promoted by translating it to many languages. Uh, and here it's a Haitian Creole. So we uh, help other countries. Learning about forgiveness is very important. As I mentioned earlier, forgiveness is a choice and it's a practice. We never get mastered and we say, oh, that's it, I'm done, because it's an everyday process. And forgiving people in our lives, as uh, um, Williamson said, Forgive people in your life, even those who are not sorry for their actions, because that is something for us for creating peace. Symptoms of our unforgiving spirit are many. I have listed 10 here from anxiety to depression, but benefit uh, way as well. Benefits of practicing forgiveness are many, including bringing peace, inner peace, and spreading the peace to everyone around us and then therefore around the world. You know that 21 September is a World International Day of Peace according to United Nations and we have a campaign on our social media at this time, countdown until September 21. So tomorrow would be the fourth week of our countdown where we post beautiful, peaceful messages and photographs on our social media. Meaningfulworld.com, at Meaningful World, Meaningful World on Facebook, etc. Myths are many, uh, including that if we forgive, we will forget, but the research shows the opposite. I like to also give my gratitude and uh, appreciation and acknowledge my second mentor, Viktor Frankl, who has helped me through logotherapy and meaning-centered therapy to help people find the silver lining in their troubles and tribulations and trauma. And logotherapy is meanings and meaning potential that can through our experiences, negative experiences can be clouded, covered, repressed due to our fears, worry, trauma, anxiety, etc. 
And this may cause existential vacuum where we have no meaning in life. We start substance abuse or feeling like it's the end of our life and uh, be compulsive in our actions and create chaos. So the sole meaning of life is to serve humanity after serving ourselves. And as Khalil Gibran, Lebanese poet said, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of your heart that you truly give. Here we are in Haiti sharing how to release the trauma from our physical body, how to be flexible, how to be nurturing emotional intelligence, starting from children in kindergarten. And of course, not forgetting how to embrace nature because nature itself is the best physician, as Hippocrates said. And here we are in nature, helping people that are uh, affected not only by the earthquake in Haiti, but by the political upheaval. And we send special prayers today to Haiti because their president was assassinated on Wednesday. Um, July 7th, and uh, the country is suffering tremendously with, uh, from chaos of that assassination. The importance of having faith and sending, sending love to those who hurt us or those situations that have caused us chaos, because they are our stepping stones to have a new perspective. We always end our programs with some kind of a circle. This one is our Ubuntu circle of oneness based on African philosophy of I am because of you. And uh, our energetic healing to release the trauma in our body and our heart to heart circle of love and gratitude connecting with everyone in the world. We do this in a harmonious integrative model called the seven step integrative healing model uh, for forgiveness and self-care and the first step is identifying our feelings and assessing them evaluating measuring from one to ten uh, second step is uh, remembering and releasing achieving catharsis letting it off of our chest as we say in public and the third step is giving empathy or seeking empathy if we are sharing our trauma. Empathy and validation reinforces and helps us get to closure, according to Harry Stack Solomon. And the fourth step is jumping through the victimhood and rising above the ashes to victorhood, learning the lesson feeling positive about something we learned about ourselves in difficult circumstances. And then step five is gathering information, being an enlightened learner and seeking information, resources, apps like the gratitude app, like our the meaningful Monday campaigns, like our campaign countdown for International Day of Peace. These are some of the things that we can use in social media to have others encouraged and uh, excited about these uh, important uh, social uh, justice issues. And then, of course, being one with nature. We feel in chaos and disarray when we are separated from nature, but when we are connected with Gaia, Mother Earth, we feel grounded and loved. And then last, the seventh step is physical release, yoga, soul surfing, tai chi, whatever your choice is, just release, stretch your body and let uh, all the constrictions be released through your stretching and then meditate, quieting the mind. This beautiful slide is uh, a photo of a sculpture in New York at Cathedral St. John the Divine, and you see this huge silhouette, the human silhouette, and a smaller one, smaller, smaller, all the way to the seventh, the fetus. 
And the message in this, according to uh, Native American, is in all your deliberations and actions, be always mindful of your impact on the next seven generations. But according to the recent research on DNA, they propose that it is passed on to 14 generations. So we need to be extremely mindful. And last but not least, this beautiful aesthetic tapestry from Southern India, one woman's attempt every spring to bring colors and life and flowers in this dead, it used to be a dead valley. And now look at this beautiful like rainbow and like the energy chakra colors, purple and blue and yellow and red and green and orange harmoniously come together to bring us this aesthetic beauty that we can just look and be mesmerized, open our heart and send love to everyone. And here we see the importance of one person's work, one person, one woman. That's why in At Meaningful World, we promote all of our team members engaging weekly, sending weekly SMART goals. SMART goals stand for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So this way we can reflect on what we need to accomplish and how we need to be remembered in this life and then take one step at a time each week to get to our goal. My question that I like to leave you with is where are your flower bulbs and flower seeds? Where have you been planting them and how are you nurturing them? Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you have a wonderful time at American Psychological Association. I'm grateful to Robin Tripto for this wonderful panel and all the other, my colleague panelists. And I want you to have a safe, joyous, and meaningful day. Thank you.